Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. Low Faber on from Good Homes documentary. I had seen the work that you did on the From Good Homes documentary, Charlie Loves Our Band. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you could chat like just a little bit about how that came about, that, you know, being from Jersey and maybe the scene up there, how that kind of got you going on some stuff. Oh, God, I'm going to be so disappointing to you here, Amanda. <laughs> I'm curious. Like I said, I was, that, was a, that was a surprise when I, when I saw you in that one. Yeah, no, I I, rem- <laughs> I remember doing the interview because we were sitting outside in Vermont um, before, you know, the, in the afternoon before I played a gig. Uh, and I remember the guy uh, asking me to do it and he was really cool and he was very, obviously very huge fan of From Good Homes, but he was also you know, so interested in all the aspects of the whole scene and everything. Uh, You know, I I think like last time I interviewed with Kevin, we actually joked about how little I remember about some aspects of like the early nineties. We, we were uh, God street by we, I mean, God street wine. We were kind of a New York, band when we formed we were all living in new york and like our first 200 gigs or so were just in manhattan um but that being said three of us were from jersey and so and a lot of our fans also were like bridge and tunnel kids coming in from jersey uh and and i do mean kids because they were all oh kitty (laughs) because they were all uh you know, like 16, 17 years old, like a big, a big thing for early God Street wine shows was like, how many of these kids can we actually get into our show? So that would have been me, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, well, good, good for, good for you and everyone like you because they yeah, we, supported we us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and we, we appreciated it big time. Uh, and, you know, I mean, we had some older fans and, and, uh, but you know, it was it was really the kids who were the mass of it, uh, and from good homes. You know, I didn't I didn't know them terribly well. Uh, we we were kind of uh, more in the jammy direction than them. So, like, uh, we thought of them as a nice band that nice people came to see, <laughs> whereas our our crowd was just completely, you know, tied eyed and stoned to the bejesus belt and you know, a little, a little more crunchy in that regard. Uh, uh, but like, you know, same, just same time period. So I think that's what he wanted to talk to me about in the documentary was just like the, the music, the local music scene in that time period and how different it is, you know, from now. Would this be Nightingales? Well, it was Nightingales at first, but then I think for all of us, it, it expanded, uh, from nightingales you know nightingales was where you sort of started and then the wetlands was and your jump. wetlands and the you know it was like every band in turn kind of made the jump like blues traveler did it first and everyone sort of tried to follow their template like blues traveler started off by having postcards that they would actually mail out that had the little grid calendar so of course we did that every band did that fish yeah, huge on that. I still have fish ones laying around. And Galactic, they were much later, but I have a pile of Galactic ones. They were so on that. Well, yeah. Oh. I mean, when I taught college, I would I would show my students like this is a physical thing that we used to send right. out. <laughs> <laughs> if you are enjoying all that jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.